So this is a photoresistor. Probably you may have seen one, but it's a, uh, a little circuit that is uh, two contacts with some semiconductor material between them, something like cadmium sulfide or some other type of semiconductor. And when photons hits that semiconductor, it creates electrons, and those electrons allow electrical current to pass. And so this thing acts like a resistor, and when light shines on it, it gets more and more conductive because uh, there's more and more electrons that will allow it to conduct electricity. And when it has no light falling on it, then it doesn't conduct. So um, I'm going to be using this in a circuit, but let's kind of measure the properties of this uh, photoresistor. Okay, I have it hooked up to an ohm meter. So we're measuring about uh, one, one kilo ohm. And the room lights are on. If I put my hand over it to block some light, you can see the resistance is going up. Uh, now it's up around 10, 10 K ohms. So uh, 1 K ohm, 10 K, uh, well, even up to 20 K ohms. So if I turn off the room lights, it uh, goes to 2.7 K. There's still some light coming in through the window. Put my hand around it, now we're up around 60 K. So you can see there's quite a large dynamic range for these things. Um, let me find a flashlight here, and we will we will shine a flashlight on this thing. And now we're measuring about 140 ohms, so uh, it becomes quite conductive. So um, you can use this thing as a photo sensor, a light meter, uh, turn the room lights on if it's dark, uh, monitor things. Anyway, I'm going to use it a different way. So uh, let me uh, let me show you the circuit that I'm interested in. All right, here's our friend, the uh, non-inverting amplifier. And we have uh, two values here. And for this sake, I'm going to be putting a 10K, uh, 10K resistor here. And this resistor, I'm going to make a photoresistor. So we're going to draw it like this. And as the resistance changes, the gain will change. So remember, we sometimes we saw the resistance up around 10K, so this should be uh, a gain of 2. Sometimes we just saw this thing around a K, 1K, we've got a gain of 10, down to 100 something ohms, we get a lot more gain. So let's hook this up into a circuit and uh, see if we can't get this to work. This may be hard to see, but the photoresistor is right here. And it's in that circuit as I was showing you. And so let's um, let's take our oscilloscope and we'll measure the the output of the circuit. And we'll have the uh, sweep generator as usual from one hertz to a megahertz. And we can see except for the glare. <laughs> Let me move the oscilloscope, point it this way. Oops, I just turned it off. There we go. Uh, that's better. All right. So uh, we have um, some amount of amplification. I'm going to put my hand over the uh, photo photoresistor and you can see that the gain goes down. Uh, so as I make it dark, the resistance goes up, which means it's not amplifying as much and uh, things go down. The noise on the signal there is due to some ground problems in the, uh, not ground problems, but switching, switching power supply no noise in my uh, system here. So just ignore that. It, it, it doesn't really matter um, for the prototyping. Uh, so just ignore those. Uh, little spikes of noise. Okay, so let me um, get my flashlight, which I've just lost now. <laughs> I just had it in my hand. Here it is. Okay, if I put the flashlight... Uh... Oh, now we're gonna saturate. So we're gonna get a lot of gain when we 
uh, put the uh, flashlight on there. And so we get a, a pretty good ratio of uh, from light to dark. All right. Um, now, something interesting when I first turned this on, let me turn the room lights on and we will amplify that so we can see what's going on. And I went, oh, what's that ripple? <laughs> well, that's actually the room light ripple. That's actually 120 hertz from the, um, from the room lights. The room lights are um, LED and they have drive electronics that um, run off of 60 hertz here in America and they flash at around 120 hertz, double that, and so you're seeing that ripple. So if I put my hand over the top, it goes away, and uh, that's just due to the room light flickering. Um, let me turn the room lights back off. The other interesting thing was I had my, um, uh, my, my flashlight, and the flashlight has bright mode, flashing mode, and uh, a dim mode. And I, if I use the dim mode, you can see that the dim, the dim mode is pulse modulated as well. Um, <laughs> so that's interesting. But anyway, that's not the intended purpose. The intended purpose is to have a circuit that I can vary the amplitude of electrically. Well, we're modulating it um, optically but if we had a, a separate circuit that used um, an LED, the LED would get brighter or dimmer with that circuit. And if we had that next to this photoresistor, then this photoresistor would go up and down in resistance and the gain of the amplifier would go up and down. So you can imagine that I, I now can build a voltage to gain conversion, uh, a variable gain amplifier uh, voltage controlled amplifier, VCA. Um, why do I want to do this? Well, that's because they're expensive to buy. You can buy chips that do this and they do it really well, but they seem to be very expensive. They seem to be up around the uh, seven, ten dollar range, uh, which seems kind of ridiculous for what they're doing. So I thought I would use this technique, which is used in a lot of things. Um, the circuit that I'm interested in is a uh, uh, compression circuit. So as uh, signals get too large, uh, you lower the gain of the amplifier. And so you need some type of voltage controlled amplifier to do that. And uh, we certainly can do that uh, with, uh, with this circuit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a, uh, an LED over here and uh, this will go in a box so it'll be nice and dark so the only light that will be in there is due to the LED and so as the signal gets too big the LED will get brighter and brighter which will uh, turn this on which will make this bigger and bigger and bigger so that won't work so we have to have a circuit that has an inverting amplifier so the larger the signal the lower the voltage so we'll start out with a bright led and we'll have the lowest amount of gain and then as the signal goes up this signal will go down this will go dark and this will stop amplifying so that's the way that's the way it'll work another th another way that you could uh, make the circuit is to use a uh, use an fet you could use a um, uh, a JFET, uh, a JFET transistor. It also will vary resistance with voltage input. So that's one way people do it. It's a little bit finicky, but um, certainly we can do it that way. Or we can buy those expensive chips. Certainly different ways to do it, but this is the way that I've chosen.